Yeah, welcome back. And now we have another session with SAP HANA. But this time we're going even once level deeper. We're going into HANA multi-model. So this is a very interesting topic for a lot of the folks, especially for TechEd, because we're touching on the various aspects of HANA from uh, graph, from uh, spatial, from document store, etc. So to go in deeper into these topics. And I know one of the developer advocates will be very happy about this hour. This is Vitali. You saw him. That's apparently the guy who drinks all the time coffee. I did not know that before, but I learned something new from the developer keynote. And if you have missed it, there was a lot of topics and uh, sessions also in the Devtoberfest, which just finished. And Vitali and the team, they also put something together around HANA multimodal. And uh, there's also some exercises in Devtoberfest. You can even map out with the spatial functionality the SAP campus in Waldorf. So if you're interested, uh, these sessions and these exercises are still available. So please uh, check it out. So we have a, definitely a full packed hour with a lot of interesting topics lined up. We will start out with an expert panel. And for this panel, we have uh, also external guests from Forrester joining us in uh, to really also give the perspective from the outside. Uh, where is multimodal going from a database market? Um, what is there and how is HANA positioned in that space? Also, uh, we will go through a demo, go deep into Graph Spatial Document Store. Of course, everybody wants to see that. And we also have a customer panel with Motor Oil, Parkline, Parkland, and Steinbeis. And last but not least, we are also doing an expert Q&A. So for the expert Q&A, as always, if you pick up any questions along the next 45 minutes until the expert uh, panel starts, or even through the expert panel, please put it in. We will pick it up and give it to the HANA multimodal experts. And with that, I would like to say, let's move into HANA Multimodal. Yes, yeah, so our expert interview, we are delighted to have joining us from Forrester, Noel Johanna, who's Vice President and Principal Analyst at Forest Research. And with him, we have Matt Zinas, our very own Global VP of Product Management and Strategy for HANA, SAP HANA and Databases. So we're delighted to have them here today and get their thoughts on the multimodal data platforms. Welcome, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot for having us. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Noel. Hi. Hi. Perfect. And thanks for joining us in Channel One for Tech at 2021. Um, I have a, definitely a lot of good questions here. And let's start out with, with Matt. Uh, the first one is like, what is, every, what is it everyone needs to know about multimodal? Uh, processing and why is SAP spending time on it? So I think that's a very important question. Well, great. Um, first, I think you all find this to be a really interesting and compelling topic. And quite frankly, something that I and others at SAP are absolutely passionate about, multi-model platforms and processing. Now as to the question, why are we here about this? Well, as we all know, Organizations are experiencing enormous challenges around data complexity, uh, massive amounts of data volumes they have to manage, new sources of data popping up all the time, uh, new demands on that data, as well as legal and regulatory requirements. And the reality of that fragmented, heterogeneous, multi-cloud landscape. And at the same time, clearly the lines are blurring between on-premises, the cloud and hybrid. So organizations, ultimately need to be able to simplify their landscapes and multi-model database platforms help customers do this by consolidating the ability to store and process not only relational data for transactions and analytics, but also for various other data types or models such as geospatial, graph networks, JSON, in one data management solution, as well as apply intelligence to that data with predictive machine learning and algorithms. And for SAP, Multi-model processing is a key part of our strategy and our strategic direction to power the data-driven applications that turn data into business value. And as many of you know, uh, multi-model processing has been a key part in DNA of SAP HANA platform for years and now SAP HANA Cloud. 
Perfect. Thank you, Matt. Um, Noel, uh, Forrester just came out with the first um, wave around uh, multimodal database platforms. Uh, maybe you can give us your perspective on uh, the multimodal database platform market and also like why is Forrester focusing on this and what do you see from the market overall? Yeah, yeah ab absolutely, absolutely. You know, what, what's interesting is that um, we've been getting a lot of inquiries from customers, whether they are financial services industries or retail or healthcare or manufacturing and asking about multimodal. In fact, the number of inquiries we've been getting this year has grown by 50% over the previous year. And I think this is a reflection of uh, people are dealing with all kinds of this data today, right? Especially as they go to the cloud, they now look at um, structured data, unstructured data, semi-structured data, and they want to leverage this data for these new modern smart applications. They want to build upon it, right? So you want to really have these kinds of data to drive these results quicker and faster. And, and traditionally, we've had these different databases to deal with in that, dealing with that, right? You may have structured data uh, separate, unstructured data separate, semi-structured data separate. <laughs> like, why do we need the separation? It's all business data. Why can't we have this in a common platform, right? And that's one of the bigger drivers uh, for this multi-model uh, platform. And, and there's also this need for driving more real-time data, right? I mean, we all want to drive towards this more modern architecture, but also dealing with uh, the real-time data so that um, applications or insights or analytics could also take advantage of that as well. And, and obviously the focus is also on self-service and agility as well, right? Uh, no one wants to build application which takes like forever or six months from now, right? Uh, they want to build application in, in days, right? And, and, and that's why this modern platform, this multi-model platform is really driving this uh, new requirements for these new generation of applications and insights, which need to have all these kinds of data, uh, structured, unstructured, semi-structured, but also different data models, whether you're dealing, dealing with relational data models or graph data models or key value or documents or spatial, um, no, so it really provides a very good uh, context around this. And, and you know, what we've seen is it drives more productivity and, and, and consistency of data, which I think is very beneficial uh, to organizations, you know. Okay, perfect. So uh, Matt, one question for you. What are the typical use cases you're seeing uh, multimodal being applied on? Yeah, well, so there are, and I've seen numerous use cases, too many to mention, uh, and, and they're all really different. Uh, the reason is, is as you combine the different data types and processing together, the combinations and permutations of scenarios becomes really significant. Uh, but certainly multi-model scenarios are, are some of the most impactful in terms of bringing intelligence and simplicity to the world uh, and, and, and the customer challenges. Later on in the session, you actually see some customers talking about their use cases. However, I would generally characterize use cases by distilling them into three implementation patterns that we see. The first is just your general open platform for custom solutions. This is using SAP HANA Cloud, for example, as an open platform to create and extend those next generation applications and solutions by both developers and data scientists. But basically invoking the engines that they need, writing the applications, uh, combining spatial graph, machine learning together in a high performing way. So a very typical scenario is extending one's SAP S4 uh, landscape with SAP HANA Cloud, combining SAP data with non-SAP data, uh, you know, things along those lines. Uh, and then consuming that with a custom UI or analytic tool. The second pattern we see is operationalizing and embedding multi-model in the business processes. And this is actually the most interesting to me. This is about driving multi-model into the business processes, right? This is about SAP applications like S4 and line of business apps, like supply chain, leveraging graph, spatial and predictive, and helping support intelligent enterprise applications. You know, from an end user point of view, um, they may not even know that an alert or recommendation that they're getting is from a sophisticated analysis done on unstructured data or graph data. But behind the scenes, the multi-model platform is continuously running this analysis and then feeding that back into the intelligent applications. And then finally, you know, a platform for third-party ISVs. You know, this is about using the multi-model platforms like HANA Cloud as an underlying foundation to accelerate multi-model processing. 
A great example of that is a, a great partner of ours, Esri, in the GIS space, using HANA as a geodatabase under the Esri platform to accelerate spatial processing and transactions. And it's about pushing the processing into the data platform to really exploit the performance and capabilities and gaining lower TCO, uh, greater integration and scalability and elasticity. And I think in general, you know, the multi-model use cases are really limitless and the multi-model platform can really provide that flexibility in terms of how it's consumed, where it can be deployed and who can leverage it. Um, same question more also like for Noel, like what do you see, like what do you like to add a few more additional use cases? Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely, you know, and I, I think Matt called it out well that there's a very much variety of um, use cases we are seeing with multi-model, uh, whether it's mobile, whether it's IoT, whether it's customer 360. Uh, we do see also in, in the social networking applications being built with the uh, multi-model and edge, the edge use cases, right? The mobile edge cases are definitely growing as well. So uh, I think there's a whole variety of things but besides running transactional and uh, uh, operational workloads, we also see microservices applications being built on multi-model. Instead of going to 10 different locations for data, you can go to one location <laughs> for data actually, right? With, with microservices applications. And we see this all across financial services industries, healthcare, uh, retailers, manufacturing, utilities, public sector, uh, who are embracing this multi-model, you know. Okay, perfect. Um... Let me let me uh, go to one of the next question also uh, to you, Noel. Uh, what are leaders doing to stand out from other vendors? I think this is very interesting. What should customer consider to be important when evaluating a multimodal uh, platform database offering? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a good question. Um, I, I would say it's all about uh, speed and performance, right? I mean, because the fact that you're dealing with so much variety of data you want to be able to access this data quicker and faster uh, and deal with all kinds of data, right? So I think the leaders, um, when it comes to leaders, they really uh, have to address the speed, the issue of speed, especially leveraging memory architectures, right? Like DRAM and flash and SSD, right? Which is very important because you want to be able to access data uh, faster and, and quicker, right? Uh, traditional architectures haven't kept up with that as much. So I would definitely see you know, the leaders definitely having those in-memory capabilities, but also a, a platform that's integrated with dealing with all the data models in a single platform, as opposed to having 10 different platforms, you have a single platform for dealing all data models. And, and as also mentioned, real-time data and, and self-service capabilities are critical for leaders to really deal with all these new generation of data sets. And, and also <laughs> security, right? Uh, security, I think is very important to have for the leaders to really drive the results for compliances and for other security needs as well. So these are the important criteria as we see um, customers demanding, you know. Okay, perfect. Uh, Matt, one question for you. Where does SAP see the multi-model going and what are you working on right now? Yeah, so actually there's three key tenants to our strategy. It's about continuing to democratize multimodel. Noel just mentioned that, about operationalizing it and accelerating multimodel throughout the entire enterprise. So we're democratizing multimodel by making it easier to consume, integrating with access and consuming via uh, concepts such as SQL-based access to all data, as well as integration with other data sources and systems. And this includes openness to allow other third-party applications, including open source, to consume multimodel capabilities. Also, we're operationalizing. I just mentioned the examples about embedding multi-model in the business processes by providing the ability to utilize multi-model data types and models in SAP line of business and industry applications. And this is where we're truly making multi-model available to everyone uh, with intelligent enter and enterprise applications where the user may not even be aware uh, that they're using multi-model behind the scenes. And this is essentially driving multi-model into the business. And we're also accelerating multi-model. So we're focusing on continuing to work on price performance optimizations, ultimately helping customers reduce TCO. Uh, with SAP HANA Cloud's example, um, using a high performance, the ability to combine numerous multi-model data types and leverage its cloud native elasticity and scalability, 
gives our customers a key advantage in uh, which to build upon and provide a high performance platform. And our strategy is really simple. Uh, it's about safeguarding and maximizing our customers' investments within their ecosystem for both SAP and non-SAP data sources while providing them a simple pathway to powerful multi-model capabilities in the cloud. Okay, and I have a quick last question for Noel. Like, where do we see the, the market going on multi-model? And if we meet in a few years, besides SAP being the leader in that market, where you see it going? Yeah, yeah that, that, that's a good question. Uh, I, I would say definitely we're gonna see a lot more about the uh, automation part of it, more intelligence more data intelligence uh, within the platform, more self-service capabilities within the platform, uh, dealing with multiple workloads um, together, operational, uh, transactional, and analytical, and, and larger deployments right, running into hundreds of terabytes into petabytes as well. So it's all about automation, intelligence, uh, self-service capabilities, which is really going to drive the, the next generation of uh, multi-model. Okay, perfect. Well, this was a lot of great insights. Thank you very, very much for joining us here on TechEd. And I hope I see you in a few years again and you tell us again <laughs> what's next about multimodal. It was really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Wow, that was really interesting. Um, so we're going to jump from that straight into a demo. And next up, we have Marcus Faft, who's going to show us the multimodal functionality of SAP HANA in, you know, in practice. So he's going to focus on spatial, graph, and machine learning capabilities. And in practical terms, he's going to use some real world examples of things like the COVID pandemic and the Suez Canal blockage um, to show how fragile our supply chain can be and how these tools can help us overcome them. So let's take a look. Hello, my name is Markus Fart, and I will give you a demo showing HANA multimodal capabilities in specific that comprises spatial, graph, and machine learning. The COVID-19 pandemic situation has shown us the fragility of global supply chains and the importance of managing the risks for good supply and production. Similarly, we also remember the Suez Canal blockage and its disruption to the maritime supply chain, especially the tight load unload schedules at ports and harbors are very sensitive to delays. Disruption to maritime traffic leads to increased waiting times for cargo ships at seaports. So forecasting the downstream impact of delays in maritime transportation is crucial. What we are going to do in this demo is we analyze AIS vessel data. AIS stands for Automatic Identification Systems. It's essentially location observations in time. So technically a geolocation with a timestamp. This kind of data cannot only be found in maritime transportation, but it is also the raw data source for many other scenarios. So uh, think about public security, health or sports or environmental observations. We will show the results of four analysis processes that run in HANA. In specific, we will use spatial clustering techniques to aggregate the data and to understand the spatial distribution of the raw data observations. We will then take a look at individual vessel trajectories and their motion. Next, we will use HANA's built-in graph engine to calculate the shortest path between two seaports. Then we will simulate a canal blockage and calculate an alternative route in real time. Since the alternative route will be longer than the originally planned, we will use a traffic forecast algorithm to understand the potential impact of the changed estimated time of arrival with respect to waiting times at the Chicago docks. Note that the data is stored and completely processed in HANA, but for visualization purposes, we will mainly use QGIS, which is an open source GIS client. GIS stands for Geographic Information System. With that, over to the demo. This is um, the QGIS front end, and what we see is the raw data. It is about 10 million observations from AIS data from uh, May and June 2017. Simply looking at the raw data um, doesn't tell us anything about maritime traffic 
in uh, this location, which is Lake Michigan. So the first thing that we want to do is apply spatial clustering. That means we are aggregating uh, the observations along a spatial grid. So we are counting the observations, in this case, um, uh, aggregated by hexagon bins. So the red areas uh, indicate high number of ship observations, whereas the blue areas indicate low number of ship observations. Since we have the individual vessel types in the system, we can also take a look at the traffic routes and patterns of cargo ships. So we mainly see that cargo ships are going the north-south direction. Similarly, for passenger ships, we understand that the distribution tells us that there are mainly passenger ships going from east to west direction. Now, zooming in a little bit into the individual vessel trajectories. So the tra trajectories are essentially calculated by concatenating the sequence of data observations, the sequence of points into line strings. So what we see here are the cargo ship trajectories for a seven day interval. And we can really see the routes in very detail. Um, similarly, um, for the passenger ships, um, we, for example, understand that the high density, the high number of observations that we've seen through spatial clustering is basically coming from a single ferry going back and forth between the east and the west part of Lake Michigan. Note that there is a canal up here at Sturgeon Bay that uh, ships are able to travel. So next, what we're going to do is we are uh, using HANA's graph engine to calculate the shortest path for a cargo ship, which wants to go from up here to down there. This is how the shortest path for such a uh, cargo ship would look like. The underlying network so the graph that the graph engine is operating on is displayed here. We have used historic observations in order to utilize a cost function that allows us to find a path that tries to stick to common or well-established routes that cargo ships travel on Lake Michigan. Now, let's simulate a blockage at Sturgeon Bay over here. And for that, I will simply change the data in the underlying network. So um, this is my network table that makes up a graph. And I will simply set an attribute called blocked. For all the edges in my graph that are near Sturgeon Bay. So let me execute the query and change the data. Now if I go back to my GIS client and hit F5, I'll see that my alternative route now goes a different way. So taking uh, my departure time and the speed and the path length into account, I can calculate a new estimated time of arrival at Chicago Harbor. Now, since the new path, the alternative route is longer than the original one, um, I want to understand if the delay in my arrival impacts somehow uh, the load or unload time. And for that, I'm using a forecasting mechanism in order to understand traffic. So what you see here is now the results of running exponential smoothing um, time series forecasting. So the blue bars indicate observed historic traffic at Chicago Harbor. We see a clear um, overday seasonality, so there is peaks in traffic during noon or in the early PMs. Now the orange bars now indicate the results of the time series forecast, so it's a forecasted traffic. And um, let's say my original planned estimated uh, time of arrival was around 8 o'clock in the morning. And my new estimated time of arrival is three or four hours later. 
So I can understand that I need to deal with a lot more traffic at Chicago and potentially need to deal with a delay in unload time. So what we've seen in that demo is um, uh, ways to analyze individual location observations, AIS data that was. We stored the data in HANA and we processed it using spatial capabilities. So remember the clustering and the trajectories. We've processed it using um, the graph engine capabilities. So that was related to calculating the shortest path and dealing with a real time impact. And uh, finally, we have seen um, the usage of machine learning capabilities, in specific, how to use a time series forecasting mechanism to understand the potential impact of delays. Note that all three workloads really run on a single copy of data in SAP HANA Cloud. And this is what makes HANA so unique. You run a multitude of workloads and queries and analysis processes in a single system on a single copy of the data. Thanks for watching the demo. Bye bye. So we've now heard from Noel and Matt about how critical smart multimodal functionality is. And we've just seen from Marcus a demonstration of how it works in action. So to complement that, next up we have Rudiger Carl, who is part of the SAP HANA product management team. And he's going to meet with three customers, uh, Steinbeis, Motor Oil and Parkland, to hear about their experiences firsthand. So let's take a look. Hello there, my name is Rudiger Karl and I'm a member of the SAP HANA product management team. I welcome you to this customer session today. We have a very distinguished panel of guests to share some interesting and innovative solutions with the SAP HANA smart multimodal capabilities. So let me start with a quick introduction round and give you the chance to talk a little bit about your roles and companies. So start with Ulrich and Leon and then come to Dimitrios and Joshua. Thank you. My name is Ulrich Mittelwerk. I'm the head of IT of Steinbeis Papier. Steinbeis Papier is a European market leader for the production of recycled graphical paper. Our power demand is saturated by 100% environmental friendly and renewable energy sources. Our products have been awarded the Blue Angel environmental label in Germany and the European Eco label. Yeah, my name is Leon Müller and I'm with Avat Consulting. We are an IT consultancy company and I'm leading the business unit of Smart Data and we support our customers from various industries on their digital transformation journey towards data-driven decision-making. And we do that by implementing state-of-the-art technology and applying advanced analytics approaches. Hello, my name is Dimitris Michalopoulos. I'm the head of industrial applications in Motor and Dash. My team is responsible for project management, support and maintenance activities and sustainability of solutions that support industrial processes. My academic background is electrical engineering. Uh, Motor Oil is an energy group based in Greece. It was founded in 1970 in its refinery, one of the top refineries and most modern in Europe. started operating in the region of Corinth in 1972, basically even growing in the sectors of uh, crude oil refining. Uh, and marketing of petroleum products in Greece and the greater Eastern Mediterranean region, uh, supplying its customers with a wide range of high quality oil products. It exports in more uh, than 45 uh, countries and has about 2,500 employees. The refinery, with its ancillary plants and fuel distribution facilities, forms the largest privately owned industrial complex in Greece. And my name is Joshua Garza. I am the principal data architect at Parkland Health and Hospital System. We are the largest safety net hospital in the DFW Metroplex. And we are a uh, very busy hospital system. We are currently uh, providing analytics to the organization to better support the individuals, the clinicians that are serving our patient population. Thanks Ulrich, Leon, Dimitrios and Joshua for having you in this round. Let me just jump directly into the use cases and solutions that you have implemented. So I'll just start with you Ulrich and Leon. As a first mover in digital transformation based on the circular economy, you implemented an automated monitoring solution for your production flow. So please share with us some insights about the use case and how it has been realized with the SAP HANA database. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the 
SAP HANA graph analytics functionality in your solution. Avata Consulting helped us to start our Industry 4.0 Digital Transmission Initiative in 2017. The objective was to develop a consistent, performant and cost-effective solution to store time series data from production and to make them available to advanced analytics solutions. We are talking about more than 20,000 data points per second, which are captured and stored inside of our SAP HANA database. The first implemented use cases had a strong relationship to production issues like large-scale anomaly detection in order to prevent unwanted interruption. The platform has evolved over time. We've integrated additional data sources from our ERP and MES. Both are running on SAP HANA, which gives us the flexibility to possibility and to run analytical tasks on operational data. In 2019, we have chosen the SAP Analytics Cloud as our new reporting frontend, and we started to implement use cases which benefit a lot from these capabilities. For example, the real-time analysis of energy consumption based on raw data and flexible dashboarding for end users in the SAC helped us to achieve the ISO 50001 recertification as energy management system. Recent use cases considered requirements from our commercial departments like procurement or controlling, and that's the point where the graph capabilities of the SAP HANA come into place. Yeah, um, let me just dive into that use case. So we had the use case of the production controlling, uh, which is an all new approach that we pursued uh, on top of that platform. And the basis is, uh, or the basis idea is to represent the material flow of the uh, machinery in a batch network. And we do that by using material documents data to build a real time production network. And we build up this network by using SAP HANA uh, graph capabilities. And we do that because traditional relational data models have the limits, especially in modeling uh, these complex production flows in, in such a complex uh, industry area. And um, by simply doing mass balances and queries against that graph, we can flexibly define production KPIs. And this framework is very easily extendable and very generic and allows us to do the reporting and controlling of uh, production output. You could, for example, uh, define KPIs like gross production as uh, the, all the material flowing through the machine from one work center to another work center. And the results are then uh, again displayed in relational tables and they can then be consumed by traditional um, business intelligence tools. And uh, as Ulrich already mentioned, is that the SAP Analytics Cloud is the uh, business intelligence tool where we display the results to end users and allow them to do their analysis, like the drill down into several dimensions, like time or material dimension. Thanks, Ulrich and Leon, for giving this interesting insights. Let's move over to Demetrios. Motor Oils Hellas is considered as one of the most modern refineries in Europe. You implemented a predictive maintenance solution to prevent shutdowns of your critical equipment on SAP HANA Cloud. So could you please share with us some more details about the solution and how you could benefit from SAP HANA Cloud and the embedded machine learning capabilities? Yes, um, we implemented the solution for predictive maintenance using the SAP HANA Cloud and the SAP Analytics Cloud. Currently, we monitor uh, five process critical compressors in the refinery. Maintenance engineers are able to get informed automatically if any abnormal behavior is observed uh, by the solution. Uh, we analyzed uh, four years' sensor data in historical incidents, and we identified abnormal behavior patterns that appear even 120 hours prior to historical events. These patterns have been considered as indicators of, of upcoming failures so the system uh, constantly searches for them when it analyzes real-time uh, data. Additionally, uh, we have created predictive models for all the sensors of those compressors, and maintenance engineers get informed about their behavior for the next 24 hours. If any of the sensors is going to exceed any alarm or trip threshold, uh, the system generates notifications automatically. Of course, uh, predictive models are retrained based on real-time uh, uh, readings. Uh, SAP HANA Cloud enabled us uh, to start this challenging progress uh, pro pro project uh, very quickly uh, with low initial investment, providing in parallel all the tools and framework required to materialize quite fast the solution. Uh, the project completed only three months, and uh, from the performance point of view, 
Uh, we haven't experienced uh, any issue yet. Uh, the maintenance activities are limited and the performance of the environment is uh, the appropriate. Thanks, Dimitrios. That uh, sounds really great. And uh, I'm happy to hear that SAP HANA gave you an outstanding performance for your solution. So let's go over to, to Joshua. Joshua, in 2020 and 2021, the COVID-19 pandemic led to unprecedented demands on healthcare providers. And you realized the COVID-19 command center with a very short, in a very short time frame. So please share with us some more about the use case and the benefits by using SAP HANA smart multimodal capabilities in your solution. Absolutely. At the beginning of the pandemic, our group was asked to provide near real-time analytics, which spanned various data sources to the organization. And we're talking about current admission rates to surfacing uh, hotspots on geocoded maps. And all of this was enabled with SAP HANA multi-model framework. Uh, we were able to turn around predictive capabilities to the organization as well. And all of these analytics, all of this information that was able to drive change was surfaced in SAP Analytics Cloud. In a matter of weeks, uh, we were able to turn this dashboard around and continue to make needed adjustments and changes as the organization pivoted. Amazing. Thanks, Joshua. So, Ulrich and Leon, what are your next steps in your solution? So, what are the plans? Yeah, so regarding the production controlling, we are planning to do automatic target action comparison. So, we want to do automatic calculation of realistic target values. And by realistic, I mean that we need to eliminate effects like operation modes or the production program in order to have a very good comparison and realistic comparisons. And uh, connected to that, we want to do a deviation analysis uh, as an extension to that to directly uh, display the root cause for any deviation. So, for example, if the production uh, plan changed, then we want to directly see that in the data or from the data. And another plan is to um, apply anomaly detection algorithms to these production KPIs in order to raise alarms when, for example, the uh, reject rate is going up. And uh, until now, we are only considering the process after the production, but we are also uh, planning to uh, also connect a sensor data uh, to that graph in order to have a very holistic view uh, in, of the whole manufacturing process. And in the midterm, I'm happy to, to find adoptions of these technologies to other departments like the sales department as well. Thanks, Ulrich and Leon, and that uh, sounds uh, very interesting. And, uh, I'm happy uh, that we can support you on this journey. Um, Dimitrios, what uh, advice would you give customers who want to evaluate SAP HANA smart multimodal capabilities? I would advise them to initiate their projects uh, with limited scope at the beginning, which will result in smaller initial investment. Uh, start, start implementing, uh, get familiar, familiarized with the platform, and they will qu uh, realize quickly how easy and efficient the development of machine learning applications on the SAP HANA Cloud and the SAP Analytics Cloud solutions. Thanks, Dimitrios. And Joshua, uh, what, what are your plans with the command center? So the command center is only the beginning. We will continue to build out our excess advanced model capabilities within our developer community, enable our developers to quickly turn around analytics to the organization also uh, integrate SAP Data Warehouse Cloud with our on-prem systems and leverage data intelligence to bring more governance capabilities to various stakeholders within the organization. That's really great to hear, Joshua. And what I've heard from you, all of you is that uh, smart multimodal data processing is a key enabler for modern IT landscape to drive innovation and with SAP HANA, you got a comprehensive and smart multimodal platform to process, store, and analyze in real time various data types from diverse data sources in one single unified platform. Thank you again, gentlemen, for your great insights you provided in this discussion and your participation in this customer panel. And thanks, folks, for attending the session today. I hope it was useful for you. Goodbye and enjoy the take it.
Okay, and we are back in the kitchen. And what's better up after a demo and a customer panel is, of course, getting the experts in and to answer all the questions you might have after the two uh, discussions and videos out, out there. So for the expert panel, if you still have questions, they're open. So please put it into the system. There's the Q&A system. Just put it in. And with that, let me bring up our experts. You've seen already two of them. That's uh, Rüdiger Karl and uh, Markus Fahrt. Rüdiger was in the customer panel. Markus did the great demo on the ships. And we, in addition, want to invite also Christoph Morgan. He's product manager, um, also on the multimodal database. And welcome. Um, how are you guys doing? Great. Oh, fine. Thank you. Hi, Ola. Hi, Thomas. Hi. I'm fine. Oh, great to see you guys, really is. Um, so, Rudiger, first of all, great customer stories, but not only one, not two, but three customer examples of how this technology is being used. So, fantastic job there. Well done. So, I'm going to give you the first question. Um, what are the advantages of SAP HANA Cloud as a multi-model database? <laughs> That's a good question. And uh, instantly, a lot of advantages uh, comes to my mind. So, I, first of all, HANA Cloud comes uh, with all the core functionalities you know from, from HANA. So you have in-memory uh, processing speed uh, combined with um, graph, spatial, and uh, JSON document processing uh, and embedded uh, machine learning in the same database kernel. So all these different data types and domain model are processed in the same transactional domain, so asset compliance and consistency is always given, and it's a huge advantage. And additionally, with HANA Cloud, you have all the cloud qualities like scalability, elasticity, and resilience. And as a developer, you can instantly provision in HANA Cloud. You can connect to HANA Cloud with your preferred tool, uh, with a SQL console, with an, a domain-specific client. You can access these data in HANA Cloud and um, query them. You can, um, you can change them and you can uh, manipulate them and visualize them and you can, can even connect to other data sources and combine them with your multi-model data you have in HANA Cloud. And this uh, brings an uh, extremely fast success in your innovation projects. That sounds really exciting. Um, so next up, Christoph. Christoph, first of all, great to see you. Christoph and I have worked on many projects over the years, so lovely to see you. Normally for TechEd, we'd be in Las Vegas at 6 a.m. doing the fun run. Uh, unfortunately, not this year, uh, but still great to have you here. Um, so your question is going to be around machine learning. No, no, no uh, surprise there. So what are the typical use cases that we are seeing uh, where SEPANA Cloud customers are applying the embedded machine learning capabilities? Actually, the use cases are the, the really the classic machine learning cases we see customers applying scenarios like classification, forecasting, regression scenarios, and what we actually heard from the customer panel, uh, scenarios like anomaly detection and predictive maintenance for two of the customers, um, Motor or Hellas uh, explicitly detailed out uh, their use case applying the PAN machine learning capabilities and, and two other customers applying uh, the PAL library for demand forecasting scenario. Just like the other customer we have seen, Paul Hartmann, uh, a, sub a medical supply customer in Germany, also applying the uh, PAL forecasting capabilities for demand forecasting cases. And Otto G, uh, we heard in the uh, keynote, early on channel one, um, also using the PAL library for demand forecasting scenario. Perfect. Next question, I think it's uh, Marcus for you. Uh, the question is, is the JSON document store also included in SAP, HANA? I think the cloud is the, the question mark. Is it included? Yeah, I would, I would, um, yeah, it is included, but I would say uh, that's not the main point. The point is, it's an integral part of SAP HANA Cloud. The thing is, the JSON document store complements the column store, which is used for relational data, with the capabilities to store schema flexible JSON data with deeply nested structures. So it's, it complements, still, it has. It shares the same interface. So we're talking SQL to our JSON document store. And 
since it is running in the same transactional domain, you can run joins, joining your JSON data to your relational data. And um, last but not least, um, the same operational concepts are shared and include also the JSON document store. So there is bond backup and restore process. That's, I would, uh, that's why I would say it's not only included, it's an integral part and it's a nice complement if you're working with not only relational data. That sounds really interesting. And maybe a follow-up question to that, it might be you, Marcus or Rudiger. How can you actually load spatial graph or JSON data into SAP HANA Cloud? Yeah, let me take that one. Um, I would I would say basically all the, the major channels or, or um, integration channels also apply for JSON data. So, I mean, there is a ways to import and export JSON data from so-called document store collections, just like you import um, your data into, uh, into um, tables. But uh, obviously there is also replication mechanism and, and uh, ETL products like data intelligence, which allow you to uh, load uh, all kinds of data, not only JSON, but also uh, spatial data. And last but not least, our Python interface, the machine learning client um, in HANA, that also allows you to um, get JSON data and ingest it into a collection. So depending on your role, if you're a developer, if you're a data scientist, if you're a data integrator, I mean, you work with the tools you know. Okay, uh, the next one, and I think you touched on this one. I think I know, I know the answer, but the question is, how can you access multi-model data in SAP HANA Cloud? So I can take this. So uh, what we have is a, a unified SQL access layer. So that makes it extremely easy for database developers to access all these different data types and domain models. So you have, so you have SQL access and in HANA, in HANA Cloud, we extended our SQL syntax to, um, to offer additional SQL functions for spatial data types, for uh, graph processing, and also for native uh, JSON document processing. So you have a unified SQL access. I think this is a huge advantage for database developers, for data scientists, and maybe um, Christoph, you can jump in we provide a Python um, a library uh, in the Python client where you can access graph data and also spatial data types very easily. And um, that makes it extremely fast uh, to speed up with HANA Cloud and Multimodal. Maybe Christoph, you want to add something? Yeah, uh, Marcus actually already talked about the Python and there's also an R machine learning client which you can download with the HANA client or install from the PyPy public repository HANAML, pip install, that's it, and you have it in your Python environment, and then use it basically as your data science expert environment to uh, instruct all the machine learning processing on HANA, but also leverage its uh, spatial graph and doc store capabilities, which are also part of that uh, Python client, actually. So Good, and uh, one more question from the audience. Also wanted to know if there are is capability to transform data from different data sources and multiple data sources to create one data source? Transforming data, is it possible? Well, I, uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I, guess. I, would, I would argue that, that this is a general question and how you um, ingest data. And um, being it from multiple sources uh, where you relate it or being it from a simple source uh, just doesn't make a big difference. So there are toolings out there uh, which help you to, to replicate the data. I mean, most prominently from our side, I guess we would need to mention uh, SAP Data Intelligence, which is such a tool which grabs data of, of multiple um, uh, formats from multiple sources being able to mix it up and transform it and finally load it, for example, into a data sync like SAP HANA Cloud. Rudiger, please add a few. Yeah, I mean, we have also some uh, virtualization or extended virtualization capabilities in HANA Cloud where you can access uh, different um, data sources and, and also graph data. Um, uh, and we can we can load them in in uh, in our HANA Cloud, or you have JSON data. You can load into HANA Cloud and access them within 
uh, in HANA Cloud itself and, and uh, consider these data then as a, a unified a single data source, but it's then within HANA Cloud. So that's maybe one approach you can use. Okay, good. Uh, always, you were warned there are tough questions coming <laughs> always from the audience. But uh, thank you so much for uh, coming here onto the show and helping us answering all these questions for the audience out there. Uh, once more, great database, multimodal. I'm curious to see what's coming next. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Of course, there's more information available. Uh, again, a packed agenda in the session catalog to go through. So, um, as we said, there is a session, a Channel One session on SAP HANA Cloud. So, this is definitely something Orla and I would recommend because we were also moderating it before. And you have a long list of additional things here on screen uh, to go through. But also, it's one thing. I guess, Orla, this is our final hour as moderators here on Channel One. I know, I can't believe it. It's gone so quickly. And we've been through so many topics, met so many people. It's been fantastic. Yeah, no, and I, I'm so happy to have you as my co-moderator this year. Um, it was a pleasure. It was really good. And I can guarantee you, Orla is so on the task. I, <laughs> I would not believe it. She was like, okay, you take this part. I take this part. You take this part. We go this one. It's amazing. Yeah. So must be the analytical. Oh, I don't know about that. All I have to say is though, great the fact that you were here last year. So I was really able to gain on some of your experience of what it's like to, to do this because it can be daunting. You see us in front of a screen. There's a lot more happening behind here. So it can be a little scary when you first stand up first. So to have someone who's done it before has been really, really helpful and also super easy. I think it's like you said, you take this, I take that. It's just been super easy. Yeah, no, I think we surprised a lot of the other moderators because they were rehearsing back and forth <laughs> and what I was like, okay, you. As I said, like <laughs> you take this, I take that one. Really efficient work style. I would say so. Yeah. And did. also it helps that we've had really, really interesting content. I think like we, you know, BTP has been a big topic. We've had HANA Cloud, Data Warehouse Cloud, Analytics Cloud. We had S for HANA Cloud. We've had BTP itself. So we've had really, really interesting topic hours. And I think when you're really interested in the topics, it makes the whole process that much easier. Yeah. Now I think the. As it just said, uh, to go into the topic and understand it and still also as a moderator to learn something new, that was for me the moment where I'm like, oh, now I've watched this customer story and now I can ask the question to the expert or there's a question coming in, we allowed to go deeper. That was really cool. Absolutely. And the people who put together all this content, the customers, uh, all the demos, everything, it's been, it's like a lot of effort has gone into it. You see a small video, but I don't think you realize how much time those people are putting into those topics. Uh, and we really appreciate that the hours would not have gone as well if we didn't have great people bringing that content together. Okay, yeah. so what are you doing now? Sleeping. Next, sleeping? Yeah. Exhausted? Exhausted. Really? Yeah. No. Well, maybe, I don't know, adrenaline's still going. But you know who I'm really going to miss? And not just you, Thomas. Casimir. Casimir. I know. Yeah. He's around, he's yes. around and the show will continue. We'll go on. So there's great moderators coming right after us, Cecilia and Rui. Yes, and they you will can keep up with them. Yeah, they will <laughs> keep up. And with us, with that, I would like to say goodbye. It was great to be on Channel One again. It was indeed, and um, just a wonderful experience. And we're going to leave you with Sunil Patel, who's leading the ecosystems for Hannah Packard, or Hewlett Packard Enterprises and they're going to take us through a short video on their offerings. But again, thank you so much. There's Casimir. Hi. <laughs> thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm really happy to be speaking with Sunil Patel, Director of Worldwide Ecosystem Sales and Alliances for SAP and Microsoft at HPE. Hey, Sunil. Hi, Abadesi. So my first question is, can you tell our listeners a bit about the partnership between SAP and HPE? Absolutely. HPE and SAP have a unique partnership spanning over three decades. In fact, we just celebrated the 30th year of the partnership. Our partnership started with the introduction of client server technology way back in late 1980 when software is made available on traditional servers. Our partnership is 100% complementary this makes us good friends in the marketplace. 
SAP and HPE share a significant joint customer base and continue to invest in co-innovation. Intel, SAP, and HPE have a high number of engineers working together in labs around the world. HPE continues to invest in SAP HANA, which you can see reflected in our numbers and market share. Finally, HPE is a key reference for SAP HANA and SAP BRIM as a customer, providing HPE with a digital core and enabling HPE's transition to an as-a-service company. That sounds amazing. And how has the partnership evolved with the move to the cloud? How has HPE addressed new cloud opportunities? Yeah, th thanks for the question. Um, look, cloud is a key component of our partnership. HP and SAP are partnering to deliver s Cloud Private Edition customer data center option with HPE GreenLake as a fully managed service in the customer's data center or co-location facility of their choosing. Customers will be able to keep their SAP software landscape and data on-premises while gaining the benefits of a public cloud experience that's subscription-based, agile, and elastic. The new private edition customer data center option includes compute, storage, and networking technologies that are certified and pre-configured for SAP software. The new joint offering brings the agility and flexibility of the cloud while also offering the security, data sovereignty, compliance, visibility, and cost controls of an on-premises deployment. Well, that all sounds very exciting. And I know many SAP customers are taking advantage of HPE GreenLake. So how are they benefiting? So HPE GreenLake sets a new standard for delivering SAP HANA and on-premises pay-as-you-go model. And we're absolutely leading in this space. Now, HPE GreenLake for SAP HANA, it offers an SAP certified infrastructure with choice of configurations, appliance or TDI, operating system services to meet workload performance and availability objectives, and the flexibility of a pay-per-use model that lets you start small and grow with business needs. In addition, HPE can run the complete SAP environment for you if that's what the customer desires. Incredible. And how does this compare to other cloud deployment options? Uh, thanks. Thanks for the question because we get asked a lot. Um, customers today require end-to-end -end solutions that deliver the cloud experience they expect. So at HPE, we see cloud as an experience, not necessarily just as a destination. And so with HPE GreenLake for SAP HANA, we provide the benefits of consumption-based IT with the controls, security, and performance of on-premises deployments. We right-size from the beginning and help customers reduce cost, easily scale, and meet rigorous availability, security, and reliability standards without vendor lock-in, across on-premises, hybrid architectures, and even multiple clouds, on the widest range of architectures available. So it's this um, you know, philosophy and HP GreenLake is resonating with customers as a true alternative to public cloud, particularly in hybrid environments. Thanks, Sunil. And where can SAP customers learn more? Absolutely, you can learn more on our website at hpe.com slash GreenLake, or you can reach out directly to our HPE sales organization. Thank you so much for sharing all of these valuable insights today. It's been great chatting with you. Thanks, Avidesi. Appreciate the time.